Hi everyone, this is Hoodie Angel Brandon. You know, with all the hype for Smash Bros Ultimate going around, everyone's talking about what newcomers they want to see. Even though the roster is already packed and we've been told not to expect a ton of newcomers, it's still always fun to see who's new. Sometimes we get some super out there picks like Wii Fit Trainer and Duck Hunt, or long overdue reps for a series like Animal Crossing. Sometimes we even get some representation to lesser known series and characters, bringing them before a wider audience. For example, Earthbound was before my time, and Mother 3, well, Reggie please. Everyone always has those special characters they hope to see, myself included. I mean, my personal biggest requests for Smash have already been fulfilled. Lucas and Corrin not getting cut, and playable Inklings. Also the return of New Pork City. And Young Link is back, and I didn't even want to dream about him returning since Toon Link exists. So with all my realistic requests fulfilled, I can turn my hopes and dreams to some things that will probably not happen. So today, I've got my 5 most wanted yet incredibly unlikely Smash newcomers. With that said, I still tried to keep these in the realm of possibility. Characters that are from Nintendo, or have been on a Nintendo console, or the company that would put them out doesn't have a character that would be a better fit. That kind of thing. For example, if I ignored this, my number one pick would be Morona from Phantom Brave. But just to be real with myself, if NIS got a rep, it'd probably be Laharl from Desugaya. So Morona is out, unfortunately. Also, some of these will be a bit general, like X-Series rep, since there are just so many cool characters that could be added. Is that cheating? A little bit, but you get the idea. Anyway, with all that out of the way, let's get started. A Zelda rep, who isn't one of the main three Triforce users, or an alt of them. The Legend of Zelda is a beloved series, and a huge one for Nintendo, so I'm honestly kinda surprised this hasn't happened yet. It does kinda make sense though, since most characters aren't recurring, and also a lot of them aren't very action-oriented compared to the main trio. But I mean, that didn't stop them from making freaking Agatha playable in Hyrule Warriors, so I think it's time for a new Zelda rep. It's kind of sad that half the series reps are variations of Link. Even though I really do love all three of them. Now the one I see tossed around the most is Impa, which makes sense given she's both one of the characters who shows up the most from game to game, but also has incarnations where she's a fighter. Impa would be an easy Echo fighter for Sheik, though she also has potential using various magic or a Naginata like in Hyrule Warriors. Aside from her, some other potential fighters include Vati, the Wind Mage from Minish Cap and Four Swords, Xant, I guess, from Twilight Princess, Yuga from A Link Between Worlds, or Skull Kid taking inspiration from Majora's Mask. These would also all give some nice villain representation. Finally, there's also... Tingle. Yeah, I know, the West hates him, but he's fairly popular in Japan, shows up several times in the series, was playable in Warriors, and could fill the role of joke character well enough. I also happen to like the guy, so there's that. Anyway, I think of all these, Impa has the best shot, and is probably one of, if not the most possible characters on this list. But I'd love to see just about any of them. The main argument against the others is relevancy, but really any of them could do some interesting things in Smash. Pete, from Harvest Moon. Okay, first of all, before I even get started, I never knew this guy as Pete. I always heard him referred to as Jack. Anyway, Jack, or Pete, is the farmer from Harvest Moon. When I was a kid between Melee and Brawl, I'd think about who they should add to the next Smash Bros game. Back then though, I didn't have any concept of first and third party or anything like that, so if they were on Nintendo, they had a shot in my mind. I was also a weird kid who liked dating, I mean farming sims, so I always enjoyed Harvest Moon. Naturally, that meant Harvest Moon just had to get a rep in the next Smash Bros game. And obviously it'd be the farmer. I mean, what are they gonna do? Make the cow playable? Yes please, I actually want this. As for how he'd play, as a kid I pictured his attacks using his various farming tools, as well as some weird things like throwing vegetables and using the bell to summon a herd of animals to trample the enemy. 
I could see those working as neutral special and either down or side special respectively. For recovery, he could pull out a chicken that flaps a few times, giving a little lift, but not being nearly as good as most characters. Actually, Villager plays decently close to how I pictured this character with the axe, shovel, and watering can, and Peach has the vegetables, but I think they could still make Pete feel unique in his own way. As for why he's unlikely, well, aside from being a literal who to most people, and potentially being too samey to Villager, there's also the fact that the Harvest Moon series, as most people knew it, has been a mess for a while now, thanks to the bad blood between Marvelous, who made the original series, which is now known as Story of Seasons, and Natsume, who has the naming rights to Harvest Moon, and now makes their own games under that title. Ugh, this mess confuses me every time it's brought up. Because of that, though, I'd say this is by far the least likely of the already unlikely additions. Even so, I think Pete could be a super cool rep for the life and farming sim genre with some cool moveset potential. Similarly to number 5, here we have a request from anyone from a series, and this time I want a new Earthbound character. Okay, this one is pretty heavy bias since I just love these games, but you know what? Since Earthbound is a completed series and thus unlikely to ever get another true game again, Smash is about the only place Nintendo really recognizes these games, so I'd love to see it get just a tiny bit more love. And the series already has four stages in Ultimate with Onet, Foresight, Magicant, and my personal favorite, New Pork City, which is a lot for just two characters, so let's get someone else in here. And no, I refuse to accept Sans as a Ness Echo. Get out of here with that. The first and most obvious would be Ninten from the original Mother, or Earthbound Beginnings as it's known in the West. He'd likely be an Echo of Ness with the same body type and similar powers. In fact, their outfits are even pretty similar. It's a little boring, but he'd be fairly easy on dev time, gives representation for the original game, and gives us all three protagonists playable. I guess if they really wanted to include him without making him an Echo, they could differentiate him in some ways, replacing Ness's yo-yo, adding in a slingshot and boomerang, which are weapons Ninten can equip in beginnings, and swapping PK Flash for PK Beam, which could work like Robin's Thoron, and getting rid of PK Thunder in favor of 4th D Slip which would be a teleporting recovery. All this would make him into a character like Ness and Lucas, but probably a bit easier for new players to grasp, particularly because of how confusing PK Thunder is as a recovery option. This would all take more dev time though, and considering the main thing I think Ninten has going for him would be ease of implementation, and Echo is still probably the safer bet. Next would be Porky, giving the series an antagonist in Smash. While some would argue for Gygus in his original Mother incarnation and playing similarly to Mewtwo, I personally think he'd work better as an assist that gives random effects, because you can't truly comprehend the form of Gygus' attack. Anyway, Porky and his spider mech could be interesting, and did show up in Brawl as a boss. He'd be a bit big, but if Ridley can fit, Porky probably could too with a slimmed down version of his mech. With that said, I'd have a hard time coming up with a full moveset for him, so I'd lean more towards Ninten or the Masked Man from Mother 3, who would similarly fill the role of antagonist. Normally, I'd feel the need to make some kind of Mother 3 joke along the lines of him being a Japan exclusive character, but I think we actually already met our quota earlier. Nice. Anyway, without going too deep into this character since he's pretty spoiler heavy, the Masked Man's arsenal differs a good bit from our current Earthbound reps. He has a sword, arm cannon, jetpack, and lightning, giving him a lot of potential to be unique, not just compared to others in his series, but also the roster as a whole. He also might be on the heavier side while still being small, making for an interesting combo. I like the potential here a lot. Finally, we could have another party member added in, but Lloyd, Anna, and Teddy from Beginnings would be unlikely to be added before Ninten, Paula and Pooh cameo in Ness's final smash, and Jeff is an assist trophy, and similarly, Kumatora, who would have been the obvious choice for this slot, appears with Boney for Lucas's final smash. That pretty much leaves the Thief Duster as an option, who has some potential, but I think would fit better as an assist trophy like Jeff. Also, they gave his rope snake to Lucas, so there's that. I guess technically Lucas's father, Flint, or Salsa the monkey could work too, but really I think we should leave it between Ninten, Porky, and the Masked Man. 
As for what makes this unlikely, as already mentioned, the Earthbound series is pretty much dead, and not exactly relevant with Mother 3 coming out over a decade ago. It's also rather niche, and a small series like this having three reps might not sit well with some people, especially when other big series like DK only have two at the moment. Oh well, a fan can dream. Another third party, and also another from Bandai Namco, who currently has Pac-Man in the game. At number two, I have Lloyd Irving from Tales of Symphonia. Having already appeared in the previous Smash game as a Mii costume, I actually think he's got a slightly better chance than most of these other characters, bar maybe Impa, but he's still something of a long shot to me. As a kid, I absolutely adored Tales of Symphonia. There was a time where I might have even said it was my favorite game. Interestingly, I never considered him for Smash at all until I saw his Mii costume, which suddenly made me realize just how badly I actually wanted him. I know you're groaning at the thought of another sword wielder, especially after I suggested characters like Xant and the Mask Man, but hear me out. As Lloyd points out, two swords are twice as powerful as a single sword, so Lloyd will be twice as powerful as any other sword user. Finally, a character to make Cloud trashed here. Isn't that an exciting thought? <laughs> anyway, while he would be another sword character, Lloyd does have a lot of moves that would work well in Smash. Of course, there's Demon Fang, which is pretty much his signature move and a likely candidate for a neutral special, though it is pretty similar to Cloud's Blade Beam, being a shockwave of energy that travels along the ground. Other options include either Rising Falcon or Phoenix as Recovery, Guardian as a Shield-type move, Sword Rain, Sonic Thrust, Tiger Blade as more generic sword attacks, Tempest as an option to cover more horizontal distance, and Beast as a heavy knockback attack. Another interesting thing to note is that in his home game, Lloyd has variations of these attacks that combine the different moves, like Tempest Beast, offering even more variety. Lloyd would have been absolutely incredible in Smash 4 with customs, but alas. So while he would be another sword character, he doesn't have to be a straightforward one. The roster already has a lot of third party characters, and there are probably a few more hype, well known, and wanted than Lloyd, like Banjo. And while Capcom does have two fighters, meaning Bandai Namco could have a second as well, that seems more of an exception than the rule. But like I mentioned earlier, Bandai's involvement with the game and the Mii costume does give at least a glint of hope. Finally, my number one pick for a character that has at least some small chance, but is still rather unlikely, is Rei from Custom Robo. It's no secret, but I love this series. Well, I'd say that, but I've only played one game from it. The one on the GameCube. There are multiple Ray model robots across the various games, but the one I'm most familiar with is Ray 01 from the GameCube game, so that's my personal pick. Though I'd be thrilled just to see a Ray model robo in the game at all. I also think Ray 01 just flat out looks the coolest, having the most fleshed out design, but of course that's subjective. Notably, Ray MK3 was an assist trophy in Brawl before being cut in Smash 4, so the series has had some limited representation in Smash in the past. In Custom Robo, the titular Robos are equipped with basic weapon types which can be swapped out or customized, kinda like the name of the game. These weapons are guns, bombs, pods, and legs. The body is also changeable to different Robo types with various properties, but in this case we'd be keeping with just Ray. Also, while you could do something with the legs, I'm not really sure how you'd represent that here since in their game, they just change things like jump height and run speed, which would be awkward for Smash. Instead, I think as a Smash fighter, he'd focus on the other three weapon types. Guns would be fairly straightforward, fast firing but small damage and low knockback. For bombs, in particular, I'd picture using one that shoots up and arcs through the air before exploding on impact, being maybe a slower but more damaging type of move and probably having good knockback. Finally, pods would be like traps that you deploy that can either chase the enemy down like a modified Mecha Koopa, or sit in place and detonate when the enemy gets too close. This would all add up to having a character with a heavy emphasis on zoning the enemy and having good positioning to work well. For recovery, it likely wouldn't be the character's strong suit. Ray wasn't particularly aerial focused in its home games, but they do have a charge attack that while normally going forward, could be repurposed to take more of an upwards angle. Custom Robo is another niche series, and the last installment was over a decade ago. 
Though Sakurai did at least remember it for Brawl, I'd say Ray is only slightly more likely than the odds of a Western release of Mother 3. Oh, got you with the surprise Mother 3 joke. Ha! <laughs> Didn't expect that, did ya? <laughs> I joke to cope with the pain. Regardless, despite some limitations and complications with relevancy, I think a custom robo rep would have some great potential in Smash. So, those are my personal picks for admittedly unlikely newcomers in Smash Ultimate. Did you see any you liked? What are some of your wanted characters, unlikely or not? Let me know in the comments down below, and as always, thank you for watching.